uh, especially in the field of, of tooling. If we're looking at hot farming tooling, we can go from non-optimized uh, uh, solutions to, uh, uh, to better solutions where we can uh, achieve significant uh, thermal gradient decreases and therefore uh, improve the uh, longevity of these, of these manufacturing tools. However, we have to take into consideration the limitations of the manufacturing process and materials. For metal additive manufacturing, we have basically, in one case, selectively melt melting, which is really good for geometrical accuracy, so for doing those really fine uh, cooling channels. Uh, but, it, but it's very costly, it's uh, quite slow, and especially it has limited availability in terms of high hardness materials. And also it's actually quite sensitive to, to, the, to the process uh, parameters, so it has a very fine uh, process window. On the other hand, we have laser melting deposition, which is quite robust, is much more, more flexible, has uh, a lot of um, materials that can be, can be used, but it's of course uh, much less accurate uh, and has a very significant thermal load. So, to employ such a, a, a tool, we will need to, to, to employ these two technologies in combination, but we have to take to consider the, their, their mechanical properties. So in this way, we were employed to, to basically do a, a test and check how these processes differ their uh, mechanical properties, uh, in this case on two different materials, one was a stainless steel and the other one was a merging high strength steel. And to, to look at the, the difference in, manufacturing, in uh, manufacturing direction. For reference, we also used some conventional manufacturing materials of the same kind, just to have some, some benchmark. In this presentation, I'll only be, look, be looking at the quasi static, uh, although the other uh, uh, testing is either done or ongoing for these projects. So for manufacturing, we use, uh, for one case, uh, uh, an equipment from Truth for the SLM, which has about a 500 watt laser. And for um, laser metal position, also another equipment from Truth with a 3 kilowatt laser and a bigger uh, build volume. The manufacturing process are here in this uh, table for both materials in, uh, in, in both uh, uh, processes. They were uh, manufactured and then milled accordingly. The specimens uh, to use in this process are a little bit smaller than, than, than they are from, uh, from the conventional standard. And this is to employ then in, in, uh, in a, a high strain rate testing in this way, allowing for a different, for a uh, direct uh, comparison between quasi static and and high strain, rate, high strain rate. In the equipment here, we, the, there's another benefit of using these, these specimens that they can be used in an equipment that we manufacture ourselves and is inside our optics uh, laboratory, uh, which is closer to my office so I can more easily <laughs> check on the work. Um, we employ digital image correlation where we have just basically a spectral pattern, rather a spectral pattern. Then we have the camera with the lighting system and then with some post-processing we can obtain the strain rate in the specimens. And it's going to show some of the, uh, the quasi-static uh, stress strain curves. And then at the end I'll just go for the comparison bar charts, so I think it's uh, more useful. But just to, to, to get a baseline on what we're talking about, here is for stainless steel. This is a very ductile steel, so we, we uh, not only get a, a very high strain rate, sorry, very high strain, uh, the, 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 the failure uh, is uh, according to that, so we have high, high necking and uh, very ductile failure. While for the merging steel, much higher strength, lower ductility, we have almost a perfect 45 degree failure and almost no necking. Uh, in uh, additive manufacturing, we noticed uh, more or less the same trends, although with different strain hardening. Uh, but as you can see here, for the, the, the stainless steel, we also get necking and failure, that's our failure, with high uh, uh, strength failure. And for the laser metal deposition, we're a little bit more scattered, 
but again, same trend, this case for the merging steel, uh, failure at almost 25 degrees and no um, necking. So here for the comparisons, we can see for the stainless steel as we were uh, mostly expecting, the one that performed the highest was the conventional manufacturing, with the one performing lowest was the laser metal deposition. Only small anisotropy was uh, um, uh, noticeable, especially for the selected laser melting in the Z direction. Although for the deformation, uh, this uh, anisotropy is a little bit higher, uh, as it would be expected, smaller defects tend to um, uh, have a more significant effect on the ductility and toughness of the material than on the strength, than the stress. For the merging uh, steel, in, uh, what was interesting that was the laser metal deposition actually resulted in um, higher uh, strength, and this might be due to the thermal history during the, the, the process, as it basically uh, almost resulted in a, in, in a thermal uh, heat treatment during the actual process. Uh, since it's a merging steel and resulted in, in, in higher in higher stress. Again, very little anisotropy uh, in, in these results uh, and the, a little bit more scatter in the, in, the, in, 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 the, in the strain as it would be expected given that the values are much lower than for the, the, the stainless steel. So, in general, uh, what we found is that we were able to, to uh, successfully manufacturing and test this, this, this test. We, we, we saw that the, the anisotropy in terms of strength is small, uh, although some anisotropy is in, in terms of ductility of these materials and is dependent uh, on, on process and, and, and material. Uh, for the stainless steel, what we found that basically is this relationship that uh, milk was, conventional manufacturing was the highest strength followed by slightly laser melting and then laser melting deposition while for marine steel we have pretty much the, the reverse of that uh, and I believe the, the question here is really the thermal history of these manufacturing processes and that the failure mo modes uh, differ between these materials uh, but are not process related but really related to, uh, to the materials in, in itself and, and their uh, nature so just left over to uh, take the funding bodies of this uh, project and that is all. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? When you Please. speak thank you for your presentation. When you speak about uh, spend the uh, dropping, what exactly do you mean by uh, basically because we're looking here at the three directions of field. So I mean anisotropy in the point of view that, uh, as you know, normal materials are general intelligent isotropic, so they have same material properties. Normally, um, we expect from uh, at the manufacturing process some anisotropy, so that the, the strength will be different according to the directions. Yes. Yeah. A short, a short question. How many specimens did you test for each? Uh, I believe around five. Yeah. Uh, given that this uh, metal additive manufacturing, we, we sometimes we add some more because when we found some defects, we try to exclude them. We have time for another question. So just a, a curiosity: Have you correlated your results to the real uh, microstructure? Uh, we've done some telegraphic analysis, but uh, that's uh, still ongoing. Yeah. We, will, we will do that. Yeah. Thank you very much. This uh, was the last presentation of this uh, section, but I want to call uh, the authors of uh, the presentation the Influence of Corrosion Environment in the Fatigue Craft Law of uh, Selling four cage steel specimens made by SLM. I don't know if uh, one among the others is uh, here. Bolino, Sepe, uh, Razzawi, and Beppo. Yeah, Beppo is not here. Razzawi, no. Bolino and Sepe? No. No. So, so that's all. Thank you.